why aren't more AVRs running Class D when they run much cooler? They're more efficient. You know, I ha actually have the NAD T778, and that one uses Hypex chips, so that's Class D. And I've I really like the way that that one sounds. Right, um, no issue with power. Uh, they were quiet. You know, I had an issue in the garage where I was getting sound coming through. You know, through the RCAs. And this one didn't have that issue. The Denons did. So, you know, maybe that's an isolated case, but I, I don't get it. It seems like a good idea. And so what I ended up doing in my living room is I had a 4700H. What? Why? I, I had a 4700H over there and I was running it, um, you know, using the internal amplification. 7.1.4, and then I had to have an one external amp, just a little Class D amp, for some height channels or something like that, right? And that thing ran super hot to the point where like it start kind of doing weird things. Like, I think it might be messed up. Yeah, like, weird things like what? Hard. Like it's turning tricks, like, like on the weekends. Like what? What are we talking about? Yeah. Weird things, bro. <laughs> here's here's what it does. So once in a while, when it gets super hot it'll just get to that screen where it's trying to set up Odyssey. Like as if I just plugged in that microphone. Mm. Right. Mm, interesting. Even though there's, there's nothing, there's nothing plugged in. It'll just pop okay. into that screen and then the sound will cut out. It just, it's acting up. Right. Huh. So I, huh. I put the 6700 H over there, but I didn't want okay. that same thing to happen. I think part of it is because it is next to an ultra short throw projector, and that thing is blowing out hot air too. So maybe it's you that know, combo. Everybody has always complained, and I never had any issues in Mammoth because in that rack, there's only a bottom and a top, mm. right? The sides, mm. the back, and the front completely open. And so maybe that's why I never had any issues. But now in the office in Pasadena, it's a little bit more cramped, so mm -hmm. I do notice the heat on the 6700. So well, maybe people weren't crazy, and I just had like the optimal. What What are the yeah. odds that I just had like the optimal situation? I'm like, it right. doesn't get hot. What are you talking about? Right, not inside of a cabinet, things like that. Um, yeah. So yeah, and, if, and your thing is, your ultra short throw, I I would imagine is putting off heat to the side, right? And yeah, receivers. but you know the the amplifier or the AVR is on the side where it's pulling air. Okay. Right, I made okay. sure it was on the side where it's pushing out the hot air towards it, so it, it could still be affecting things. I don't know, but um, another thing that is kind of curious is the 4700H, and I believe the 6700H, it has two fans on the bottom. And I always wondered, like, I've never heard those fans spin up, and I guess yeah, they true. only spin up when it's at this critical temperature where it's about to get messed up. Like, it's not like, hey, let's keep everything cool. No, it only turns on when it absolutely needs so it's, to, it's, which I think is kind of weird. Uh, so it's not like a preemptive thing. It's an emergency thing. Yes, that's kind of weird. Two fans down yeah. there. I would rather it kind of keep your, you know, keep everything not <laughs> from not getting messed up rather than, ah, oh, it's about to get messed up. So let's turn on for a quick second and then let it run hot again. They've never turned on. That's the problem, though. I've never heard them turn on ever. So just kind of a quick question. Why why aren't more companies using Class D? I assume it's gonna they're gonna be able to get more power. It's gonna run cooler. Yep. Probably gonna be less expensive. i would be my guess. I don't know. I mean, it's not gonna be as heavy, that's for sure. Yeah. So wouldn't they save what's, on shipping costs? What's the downside no. to that? Uh, I what think you, it's what like, do you think? What's your hypothesis? It, it loses its audiophile nature, is my is my opinion, right? Because it's not class oh, A, Lord. it's not class A B. You know, you know these but audiophiles you need really AVR? need their. What's that? Do you need that for an AVR though? Like I don't you know think so. Saying? Yeah, I wouldn't think so either. So I mean, you know, you know how they say that? Oh, oh, well, the amplifier imparts its amplification signature to the sound and it's coming out uh, of your speakers. Um, yeah. I think it's more about, you know, when it's an AVR, it's more about the room correction having the yeah, biggest sure. impact on the sound. So sure. room correction, speaker correction, whatever you want to call it. Right. Um, yeah. So you think it's just more about like, oh, 
audiophile people are not going to like the idea of that. I think home theater people would embrace it. I think a lot of home theater folks are embracing class D for their amplification. I think and, uh, one of the home theaters uh, that I was listening to in Texas when they were demoing this stuff, their amplifiers can, their eight channel amplifiers, you can bridge them in mono, like you can take two and combine them. And mm. he's running like a thousand watts to each speaker. I'm like, what? This is ridiculous. <laughs> you know, so I, I, you know, and I know those, those, the, the those folks over there, uh, in Kansas City or whatever, they have like you know eight twenty four inch woofers all over the place. You know, mm -hmm. um, I, I think it's just a matter of it's fighting those stigmas of like, oh, it's class D, it's, cl it's class D, it's not even class A. You know, yeah. kind of thing. I so know. I I did something interesting regarding this. I set up the sixty seven hundred H in pre out only mode and. That made it so that thing is always running really cool. Like the amplifiers are straight up disconnected at that point. And then I ran like a hodgepodge of external class D amps. So I have one from, I think it's Fossey Audio. I don't know. I always get them confused because sometimes it says knob sound or something like that. I think it's Fossey. Anyway, it's a 5.1 knob sound. Yeah. Uh, 5.1 uh, amplification in one box and then i have another four channel little app from fossey and then another two channel app from like dayton audio i don't know just like i just wanted to see what would happen what about, if i run ran everything off of class d external small amplifiers wow. and i was running stuff at reference and i did find something out right that 5.1 channel app is connected to my lcr and surrounds right now, what ended up happening is at a certain point, I was playing it at reference and the center channel just started set, sounding very uh, crunchy is the best sound, best way I could describe it. Like, how, do you, how does that <laughs> sound? Like, crunchy, like. That's um, a new audio know, the term, like, Aaron. Aaron, you'd have to define crunchy. Oh, I've been hearing the term crunchy a lot lately but it's used okay I'll, to, I'll i'll describe it in a better way like hippie type people so it's like this if if you turn up uh let's say if you turn down the power on, on your amplifiers and then you tur crank up the the power on your like preamp or your head unit let's say in a car you turn it up all the way to max and you're not it's not even loud it's that you just hear everything like like it's 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 clipping Right, but it's digital clipping. It's not clipping on. That's what it sounded like. Anyway, my point is that's what it sounded like for the center channel, and then all all of a sudden the sound just stopped. So I was watching this movie and like no one was talking. Right. Um, it turns out that <laughs> like, this like it shut off. It just shut off. It's just like sound effects. Just sound effects, and there's no dialogue. Right. So because the center channel was just not working. <laughs> so it turns out that this amplifier is capable of uh using two power supplies you've seen that aaron on some of the ones you've reviewed where you can plug in two power supplies um no i don't think i've seen where you can plug in yeah two power supplies for a single amplifier yeah no i've not seen that so so that's this one was capable of doing that and so i ended up plugging another you know power supply and that all went away so I thought it was kind of interesting to hear what, you know, what it sounded like when you fully saturate a class D amplifier and it runs out of power from either the power supplier, the capacitors, whatever. It's just not getting enough juice coming in and you're demanding too much from it. Right. I finally heard what that sounded like. It doesn't sound good, yeah. but yeah, adding, adding more power coming into it, resolve the issue. Um, so anyway, I don't know where you, what you can get from that. I think part of it is just like, what does it sound like when Class D is uh, fully saturated? What is what does Class A B sound like? Does it sound the same? I don't know, man. I think I I've done that one I've too. Ever, I don't think I've ever gotten them to that point because the only I've gotten an AVR to turn off before, but <laughs> yeah, that's you fun. know, that's what. 
Uh, I never heard like any kind of clipping or distortion, especially with those parasound amplifiers. Like I, oh, my ears never heard it before. Yeah, <laughs> that's like my ears with go. Yeah, my I've dog clipped, okay, is freaking out. I've clipped like pre inputs, you know, like on mm. a like a DAC or a DSP or something, and sent that signal mm -hmm. to an amplifier. And I definitely crunchy is maybe a good way to describe it because it definitely sounds just like very grainy sounding. Mm -hmm. How I've described it. So, and it's man, when it's obvious, like it's it's definitely obvious, but it's I don't know if you can tell, like as soon as you hit that point. But there was a DSP that I used to have that um it wouldn't take over two volts input. And it was pretty easy to drive above that with the head unit that I was using. And when I first started using it, I was like, man, this sounds terrible, like at higher output. And then I went and looked and I could see the little emblem with the little LED light. Or the clipping indicator was just, I mean, practically staying red. Man. And I was like, oh man, what what in the world? So through some troubleshooting, I realized I was just clipping the crap out of that input with the head unit. But yeah, when I heard it, it was terribly obvious. It sounded really, really bad. Uh, I actually remember clipping an old Marantz that I had. The 2220B was a, I believe, what, class AB? Oh, class AB, yeah. Those old 70s ones. Probably class A B, right? Um, two 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 zero B, and it's rated at twenty watts yeah, per channel. Watts. Like twenty watts back in the day when it put like honest, honest ratings, right? Yeah. So twenty watts per channel, and at eight ohms. So I guess a lot of the actual the speakers were actually around eight ohms back in the day. You know, big old speakers. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. I ended up trying some newer speakers that are really more like four ohms and below. And when I'd run it and crank that Marantz, sometimes it'd get to a point where it'd be like, hmm, like wanting to turn off. Yeah. Like it wanted, it seriously just want to turn off. And I'm like, oh, it doesn't like these speakers. Like it was dying or something. Mm -hmm. So very similar. It, it was actually similar to this class D. Um, did it sound crunchy? I don't remember it sounding. Mm -hmm. Maybe it did kind of sound the same. Hmm. Anyway, maybe maybe it doesn't matter. When you run out of power, it's going to sound similar in either. And so I, I guess what I'm wondering is if that's a hint to people that they need to upgrade and get external amplification. If they're starting to hear stuff kind of like that, where it sounds a little crunchy, mm -hmm. you know, maybe that's... Anyway, that's why, where I'm going with this is like people are always asking, do I need external amplification? I would say maybe just do it so that your thing doesn't overheat. There's just too many amplifiers in that thing. Maybe just if you don't want to have to buy a new one of those things, if you can turn it into pre-amp mode and not run that internal amplification, then just buy some cheap Class D amps. If the Class D goes out, then who cares? You can buy some new ones real cheap, 100 bucks. You know, yep. new amps, 100 bucks, replace them. Maybe that's, maybe that's a good way to think about it, right? Now, if you can't catch the show, we do have an audio version at anchor.fm slash daily hi-fi. So make sure to go on over there if you like to listen to the show.